Hello, Mr. Door Chief. Agent Wilson, oh boy, how terrible nice to see you. Do mind the mess, but I'm in your floor for two million dollars. It is all the bouncing. Come in, oh boy. Careful, careful, careful. <coughs> I say, it's a <coughs> oh, oh. Uh. Oh. oh. Do mind the gap, old boy. <coughs> And a very warm welcome to this week's edition of The Wednesday Week, the Sheffield Wednesday podcast. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you again. And on the line with us today, we have Eddie from over at Wednesday Night. Hello there, Eddie. Hi, hello, H. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And you, sir? Oh, in fabulous form. Ever since uh, Saturday at about 7.30 on Saturday night, I've been walking on air. Hey, <laughs> haven't we all, old boy? Haven't we all? Uh, also on the line, we've got uh, Beastie. Hello there, Beastie from the uh, Owls Live website. How are you doing, Lord H? I'm very well, thank you very much. Uh, very, very well indeed. Have you recovered from Saturday? I have just about recovered. It's taken 48 hours of detox, but I'm finally there. Unfortunately, chaps, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, it pains me to report that uh, Mr Fudge hasn't recovered from Saturday. Uh, he won't be joining us uh, today because uh, he's lost his voice. <laughs> well, if, he was, if he's lost it at the game on Saturday, I can understand that. It were a good place to lose it. Obviously, last week when he mentioned about screaming at Lewis Buxton, uh, uh, he's come good on that promise. Yep, fair play to him. He's a man <laughs> who sticks to his word. <laughs> to be honest, I think there aren't many Wednesday fans who are, are fully fit and healthy in the voice department just yet. I was absolutely aching. <laughs> I can absolutely understand, absolutely understand. But not to worry, ladies and gentlemen, not to worry, because uh, uh, although uh, this this nice young chap that we've got to, on the line for you next uh, is going to stand in for Fudge for us, and it's our very own news hound, Craig. Hello there, Craig. Afternoon, chaps. It's good to be back with you again. Oh, it's jolly good to have you, of course, uh, ladies and gents. We are expecting to hear from Craig on the show. He's our uh, man on the inside, uh, uh, but uh, he's going to join us for the full show today. An absolutely wonderful news. So thank you very much for joining us, Craig. No problem at all, Lord H. <laughs> right then, we shall crack straight on fun pack show and busting at the seams today. It's been a marvellous week for the Wednesday this week. Absolutely wonderful, unbelievable scenes. And of course, we shall start off with the game. Sherrod's ball in. Right flick on. It's going to come to John Hart. And Hurt! Go! The match. Ladies and gentlemen, what can we say? Brentford, Brentford, Brentford. Good Lord, such a difference from last time. Uh, of course, uh, Beastie and uh, Eddie they were there. Uh, uh, can you give us a bit of a lowdown, please, chaps? We'll start with you, uh, Eddie, if you don't mind, please. I'll tell you what, it's going to live in the memory for as long as I live. It's an incredible day from top to bottom. And to be honest, the performance didn't matter. The result did, and it was the performance off the pitch by the fans. Um, I was down in the, front, in the front of that terrace, and it was as, as packed, and it was as bouncing, and it was as noisy as I've ever known as a Wednesday night. It was an amazing day. The weather couldn't spoil it. The, the lack of performance of, in terms of quality on the pitch couldn't spoil it. Um, it, it was amazing. And uh, to be honest, it didn't, didn't finish at five o'clock. It was right through into the pubs, watching the Blades, going through every emotion watching them. And then finally, when that final whistle went, it's in our hands now. We all believe. There isn't a single Wednesday night now who's saying, oh, well, you know, let's, let's just be careful. We, it's still not in our hands. We can do this. 39,000 is going to be at Hillsborough on Saturday. I cannot wait. Absolutely unbelievable, chap. It's going to be absolutely bouncing. And, of course, Beastie, uh, your promise of being laid in a gutter from last week, uh, did that promise come true? Uh, I'm afraid it did, actually, yeah. And I'm pleased <laughs> that Eddie has just given me that insight into what actually happened on Saturday because most of it is just a blur. Um, that was probably the longest day I've ever spent watching Sheffield Wednesday. Um, getting up... 
so early, getting on the train, on the tube, um, getting into the pub, going there. And I was a little bit <laughs> under the weather, shall we say, by the time we got into the ground. <laughs> and like Eddie says, the weather was just absolutely dreadful. It was throwing it down. It was cold. But none of that mattered. And the performance by the Wednesday team was, well, it was poor. Let's just say it was poor. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Um, we got the result. Um, I spent the last half an hour facing the wrong way because it was just a little bit too tense for me. <laughs> <laughs> I do turn very, very girly. Um, and the last half an hour, I was looking at everybody else's faces, uh, and my young'un were telling me what was happening. Um, but like Eddie says then, it continued afterwards in the pub. Blimey, the pub afterwards. Watching the Pigs game was just as tense as watching ours. And again, oh, it was harder. Last... Yeah, it probably was harder, <laughs> because um, you like to think when you're there as supporting Wednesday that you're helping. But when you're watching the Pigs, there's nothing you can do about it. And you think the football <laughs> gods are going to curse you. <laughs> but no, it were unbearable, and I couldn't watch the last 10 minutes of theirs either. Oh, I don't know what was the bigger outpouring of emotion, whether it was um, the, the, the winning goal from Lara and seeing that going right in front of us and knowing that we, were, we had our noses back in front and we probably weren't going to bottle it this time, um, or the full-time whistle going. And it, it had been so tense, especially that last... Well, it was more than five minutes, wasn't it? Because they played about seven minutes of injury time as well. But when that final whistle goes and, and actually knowing that they've done exactly what we've been hoping and, and all of the banter and all of the crap that we've said saying, oh, Agent Wilson's got them sorted and they're going to drop points at a crucial time. Well, these last two games, they've done that and it, it's, it's with us now. That, and that moment was something special. Yeah, for so, for so long now, we've, we've all been confident that we could win, but none of us really, truly believed that they would drop enough points for us to take over them. And for them to actually do that on that day, when we performed yet again first, and then them playing afterwards, knowing what they've got to do, for them to actually do that, well, none of us could believe they'd done it. And well, I don't think I've ever, ever wanted a team to beat them as much as I did in on that day. It's absolutely jolly nice of them to, uh, to to do that for us, chaps. Absolutely jolly nice. Now, it must be said, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, Craig is a terribly professional gentleman and uh, he does have uh, professional obligations. And, uh, Craig, uh, we do have to have full disclosure here. You was actually working at the Blunts game, if I'm right. Well, this is it. Someone's got to do it. So, uh, yeah, I knew there'd be a lot of Wednesday fans obviously travelling back from the game or just probably avoiding the game. I mean, it was an absolute nightmare trying to watch it and tweet at the same time. I didn't know where to look. I didn't know where to put my hands. I had my hands by my head for most of the game. And that, that second half, United's comeback, you've got to give credit to them. They were fantastic in that second half. That, the entire game, game was a great game. advert for, for League One football, wasn't it, Craig? Oh, yeah, you watch that Man United Man City game last night and you think, is that really a better game than what I watched on Saturday? I mean, the emotion involved obviously takes a lot into it, but it was a fantastic game of football. It really was. Yes, so, 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 yes, full disclosure, Craig was down uh, there with the blunts, but uh, only because he had to be. Uh, he was forced, and uh, sometimes, ladies and gents, we do have to do things we don't want to do. I once had to do the washing up. Oh, how awful it was. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> Shan't be doing that again. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, so on, uh, with the game, of course, uh, the, uh, the first Wednesday goal, it, it must be said that uh, Brentford was a very different team to the Brentford who played last time. Uh, I believe uh, Beastie said last time that they came out for a draw and, and, and that's what they played for. Uh, this time, by good Lord, they came out for a wallop, didn't they, boys? Yeah, well, I mean, the first goal, I think Beastie will agree, um, from our position, as low down as we were, as far away as we were, and in, in as terrible weather as we were, uh, no one was sure in that away end whether it had actually gone in. Um, I, I personally thought side net in, uh, and I was sort of saying, I had my head in my hands, I was saying, oh, so close. Um, and then he started running away to Keith Tracy, and you thought, hang on a minute, it has gone in, hasn't it? And so you sort of look look around and, and try to work out what's happened. But yeah, we started bouncing all the same, we started chanting, we shouted stinging. Um, I don't think any of us were really sure that it had gone in and that we were 1-0 up until it popped up on the scoreboard. So uh, yeah, I can't really help other than telling you that I saw it on telly, and it was a cracking direct free kick. Yeah, that, that were exactly the same as us. We were at the far, far side on that bottom tier. Um, and we had no idea whether it had gone in or not. And like you, we waited until we saw that one on the scoreboard. And once we saw that, that was it. it went mental. And it, <laughs> even then, we were jumping up and down. There were arms about. I'm sure there were some feet above our heads. Um, at, 
I looked to our left and the Brentford fans were saying sit down. Now, barring the fact that we were in a standing only area, I thought they were a bit daft, especially because they must have seen the goal go in because they got a much better view than we had. No, oh, absolutely, gents. And uh, of course, uh, Mr. Tracy, that uh, was a wonderful left foot put that in that tiny little gap there. Uh, uh, he'd, he'd been chosen above uh, JJ for the game, uh, obviously. Uh, Craig, uh, down at the training ground, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Mr. Tracy uh, gave us a little bit of an interview uh, uh, to uh, with Sheffield Wednesday and uh, said when he uh, arrived at Sheffield Wednesday, he, he maybe wasn't fit and he's been working hard to get fit. And uh, I mean, is, is he back? Do you think he's, are we going to see a, a proper battle between him and JJ for that? To that spot. Well, this is it. I thought it was a fascinating interview actually with Tracy when he, he he more or less said that he sort of said to Dave Jones, "Yeah, I'm not fit enough to come and play. Don't bother with me." And Dave Jones had to kind of persuade him to come and play. And obviously, we've seen bits of bolstering him when he's come on, off the bench, but it's obviously taken him a while to get back to fitness. But you can see he's got a quality left foot. You can see why he's been playing Championship football. So, yeah, I think it's it's great news. JJ. Ever since he had his latest injury, he's not really come back and been that strong. So, yeah, I can see why he put him in, especially away from home. It's just a bit of experience, isn't it, really? Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously, as well, in, in a, in a high-pressure game like that, uh, the Owls had to win it. And uh, the chap's done good. The chap's done good. Fair play to him. Right then, gents. Of course, the, uh, the the next goal went to uh, to to them. Uh, uh, a penalty. Mr. Beavers giving away a penalty. Uh, uh, I must say, uh, from the uh, what I saw on the television, uh, we can't really argue with the decision, can we? <laughs> no, absolutely not. That's as nailed on a penalty as you'll see all season. I mean, to be honest, at the time from your vantage point down there you couldn't tell it was either a stonewall penalty or it was a beautifully timed tackle um, so I didn't have too many complaints other than the, the disappointment of conceding the penalty but yeah with, with retrospect and having seen it on telly um, it wasn't a, a badly judged tackle I just think the the, the conditions were uh, well, shocking to say the least. Uh, he couldn't get his timing right, and he took the man out. So, uh, no complaints. I think the referee was very brave, actually, not giving um, a, a red card then, and he was very brave keeping Beavers on the pitch, even after he did it possibly an even worse tackle about five minutes later. That's right. That's right. More or less straight away, wasn't it? <coughs> uh, and then, of course, Mr. Jones uh, uh, took him off uh, off the pitch altogether to save him getting himself into any bother. Uh, Beast, did you think that was the right decision, taking him off? Oh. Absolutely. Um, I remember uh, up at Carlisle earlier in the season when um, Gary Megson left Medine on the pitch when he should have clearly have been taken off. Um, and we were all whinging like hell at the time. Yesterday, uh, Saturday, sorry, Dave Jones got it spot on. He could see that Beavers were getting a little bit flustered. Um, it was still hurting from the fact that he'd given the penalty away and he needed to come off and he acted quickly and decisively and it was a good decision. Absolutely, absolutely, oh boy. Uh, going back to uh, the the Medine incident that uh, that you mentioned, of course, that was the incident that led to Mr. Medine uh, deciding he no longer wanted to be on Twitter. Uh, uh, apparently, got rather all through. Uh, uh, let's put this nicely. Um, uh, complaints, shall we say, from uh, from the Wednesday fans, and uh, we've never seen him on Twitter since. So um, come back, Gary. We still love you. Don't you worry, old boy. We shall stroke you now. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, they, of course, they scored the penalty. Uh, Mr. Bywater uh, uh, obviously didn't didn't uh, manage to save the penalty, but apparently had rather a good game. A couple of spectacular saves, chaps. Am I right? <laughs> He was magnificent, as much as the performance was uh, was below par. I don't necessarily think it was the worst that we've played. I think it was a combination of the conditions, the tension, and, and the lads not really turning up for it. Um, it. It wasn't a flowing performance. We were under the cost from a Brentford side that had to win themselves to give themselves any chance, uh, and Bywater pulled off a couple of really, really classy saves. Um, he, he got us out of jail a couple of times there. So, yeah, well done. Man of the match for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a good point, that, about the tension. Um, you could really, really see it in the players. But it wasn't just the players. You could feel it in the stands as well. Um, and we needed um, we needed a big bloke between the sticks, and Bywater answered everybody. He's had a lot of doubters this year from Wednesday fans. Um, a, lot of them, a lot of fans haven't been convinced about him, but he answered every single one of them in that game. And I agree, it probably man of the match.